Here we are outside 142 Gallery in Felixstowe, and we're looking at this week's artist in residence. I'll introduce you to her at the moment, but she works with all natural materials, and I have to tell you, the stuff she makes looks absolutely fantastic. If you haven't seen work like this before, I urge you to come and have a look. Let's go inside and meet the lady herself. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. <laughs> well, nice to see you. You're here at Gallery 142. Just give me your name properly so I don't have to worry about spelling it and getting it right. Tracy Barrett Brown. It's B A R R I T T hyphen Brown. <laughs> Excellent. And you're Brown without an E. Absolutely. Excellent. So you're here today and you're here until what, Wednesday afternoon? Wednesday afternoon, yeah, there'll be a change over Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. So the gallery will be open to four o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then after me, there will be a Christmas Emporium with several crafters. So oh, excellent. That will be great. That will be the final thing before Christmas. Let's not talk about them because I'll come back and see them <laughs> later. Let's talk about you. I'm going to move you a little bit, that way a little bit, if you would, because the reason I want to move you a little bit, no, you're fine, don't worry. The reason I wanted to move you a little bit is because you had a, a sort of insect climbing out of your head at one point. <laughs> Um, yes. I like what you do a lot from my point of view. You do some fantastic stuff, and it's all based on natural materials from the look of it. It is. Well, the thing is, when I first started working with Willow, mm -hmm. I didn't realise how connected you become to the sort of materials you're using, because now I do quite a lot of gathering, foraging. Obviously, I do have to buy sort of a lot of commercially grown Willow. In fact, yesterday, I had a notice ping up saying, the willow is now available, and I've been waiting for the last sort of, few weeks for that. So I had to get in quick and right. order my black wool and my Flanders red in Somerset mm -hmm. to be transported to here. That's right. And so I've got enough willow to do a new willow family. So, <laughs> so it comes it comes from distances away, depending on where the willow comes from. I guess it does. I use sort of various suppliers. I use Musgrove willows in Somerset. I sometimes use Somerset willow growers. I've got a lady in Warwickshire who started up Warwickshire willow growers. And she grows some really interesting varieties like continental purple, which is almost black, and Wissenda, which is gold. So I started doing a lot more commissions for dogs, and I found that dressing the sculpture with the different colours certainly helps. So she's been really, really helpful to me. What actually, what actually brought you into doing this? Because, I mean, I look at what you've done, and I think you've got terrific artistic ability. Thank what you. Well, if I take you, you over it? here... Yeah. When I first started, um, I started doing um, equestrian work. Right. So these sort of um, very detailed fine art equestrian mm -hmm. sort of type um, paintings, and that's taken me all over the world. I've sort of been exhibiting in Kentucky, in Lexington, at the International Museum of the Horse. Right. I've um, exhibited at places like the Dubai Equine Event, right. and I didn't get to go there personally. So. Actually, the, I sort of do have um, a fair background in animal art and right. portraiture. Right. And then I was looking to do more sculpture. Well, I did spend a bit of time with ceramic sculpture, but I found there were quite a few limitations of that. And what I love about willow sculpture is you just, just you and a bundle of willow. And that's it. That's all you need to do it. And you can do it. Um, yeah. Occasionally, I will put a little bit of steel in bigger sculptures, but... What happens is, over time, the sculptures change and sag and become more animated. So I'm not really terribly keen on using a lot of forged metal in my willow sculpture. You do see people that basically have an entire sculpture forged, and then they just dress it with willow. But to me, that's not quite doing willow no. sculpture. That's no. just dressing a steel sculpture with a natural material. Because at the end of the day, these will just, just go on the compost. They will be composted. They'll go back to nature. And the whole cycle starts again, so it's a lovely I mean, way of working. That's an interesting one. What's, what's the kind of life of a sculpture like this? Then, from, from... That is one of the most asked questions. I bet. Generally, a sculpture will last a good five years if you care for it. Spray right. it with tea coil every now and again, take it in the winter. Um, the ones down on the seafront, the Willow family was supposed to be there for a weekend and they lasted four and a half years. Really? <laughs> and they would actually have gone through this winter, but I think that would have been their last winter. 
obviously they were never able to be taken in. No. Um, they suffered a bit of um, a bit of wear and tear from passing visitors. Indeed. So really, if I think if they can last five years, yeah. you know so, that's great. But also after five years, I think most people want to change. So right. it's great thing is it's affordable. Mm -hmm. It's you know eco friendly. It's mm -hmm. sustainable. And you can have a lot of fun. And I do use a lot of recycled materials as well because I love collecting driftwood off the beaches. So you can see um, there's uh, the curly berries on a driftwood piece that I collected from the beach. Uh, sometimes um, I work with someone else who helps me with the bases. Um, oh, this base was part of a big post that was on the beach. Right. And my oh, lovely right. partner Dave upended it from Langold Beach right to the car park. And a few passes by I helped us recover it <laughs> into my mini, and then it, it has to dry out for a bit. But that was the very last piece from the top. That's so fantastic. that was lovely. And um, I've been using things like uh, recycled vintage leather buttons, which right. I've used for noses and eyes. Um, in the sunflowers, I've used recycled telephone wire. Oh, right, right. The wire. So there's lots of things you can use. There's copper wire, well, actually, it's copper colored aluminium wire, actually, in the um, Pheasants there. So yeah, I use what I can find. And you can see here, I use limpet shells. Yeah. Basically, they go like that because when they're eaten by, well, it's, it's piddock predation, the birds eat the limpets and they leave these lovely limpet rings. Right. I pick them up and I recycle them into the sculptures. You have to have an eye for what you're looking for, don't you, when you're walking along the beach? Because, because for most people, you walk along the beach and what you see is shingle or sand. But if you look amongst it, you can find lots of stuff. You certainly can, and um, I was looking for plastics mm -hmm. for a children's project that right. we were doing, so I was just picking up plastic on the beach. And then I discovered that certain varieties of plastic, the really small ones, tend to occur where there's amber. So it led me to actually being quite good at hunting for amber too. Right, yeah, yeah. Nice. So I do love my amber. I'd yeah. like to do something with it at some point. Right, all oh, right, so that'll be another challenge for you. It would be another challenge, because yeah. I've never yeah. worked with silver before. And I do love silver and amber together, so um, I'd love to do a few organic pieces of that. That's, That's another thing for the future. Let's just have a little walk around, okay. if you would. If you, you kind of walk in front of me, and let's have a look at that, for instance, because I think that's that's beautiful. I like that Butterflies. a lot. Butterflies. Yeah. Well, one thing that I did get this year, which I hadn't ever used before, was um, a bit of coloured willows. Right. So especially for Christmas. Um, this is the rainbow variety, this is a rainbow butterfly, and you can see all these different colours. And what it comes from is um, the coffin makers cut off the tops of like the big seven foot willow that they use. Right. So they cut off the tops, and if it's white, it can be dyed. So they sort of save it up, get to Christmas, and you, you get a lot of lovely. Um, Dyed Coming. willow tops, yeah. but you have to get in very quickly to get yeah. that. <laughs> so as soon as that pings up, I sort of order a bit. So that's been really good. And um, that was the last one of the rainbow butterflies, actually, because all the others had sold. So right. that, that really worked out well. Oops. You can see some other things here on the willow seahorse. There's I've recovered some cork flakes from the beach. Right. So I've recovered cork oh, flakes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Split it as the eyes, and they work really well for the willow seahorses. And you can see the shelves again that I've used. So I do like using things that I've, I've picked up, just found objects. I think that's fascinating. I love it. And the nice thing about it, I, I mean, I, I was here while you had a customer in, and you give your, your customers a bit of good individual attention, don't you? So <laughs> then you get to, well, a lot of people go out and buy stuff, and they don't, especially work like this, and they don't get the chance because they're buying galleries or whatever. Mm. They don't necessarily get the chance to talk to the artists. That's what I do like about doing mm. these pop-up events, that yeah. you really get to talk to people, they get to see your work. And um, the lady you, that I was speaking to before, she had a lurcher, so we were talking about the different colours of willow <laughs> that you could use right. for a brittle lurcher. We were having a look at the shapes and I was saying that I do do a lot of uh, drawing and sketching before I even start on the sculptures. So, so, so there's that, a lot of work to do. You have yeah. to select your willow, you have to soak your willow, you have to design your objects, you have to do a lot of sketches. You don't just sort of sit there and go, oh, I'm going to make, say, a bear today. You know, I did quite mm -hmm. a lot of preliminary work and I actually sourced some different varieties of willow for him because on his nose was the golden Wissenda willow, which I hadn't used before. Right. 
And I just happened to see on social media, Warwickshire Willows had a lot of really interesting varieties. So I rang them up and said, what have you got? And she said, oh, well, <laughs> quite a few different varieties. Right. They've sent me some dried colour, coloured sort of sticks so that I can choose from there. So I'm looking forward to working a bit more with the coloured willow as well next year. Excellent. I'm going to move you, if we may, a little bit away from the window. Because it's a bit, it's a bit kind of bright. So that's it. Lovely. Anywhere is good. So that's fantastic. So you're here then until I'm Wednesday. Here until Wednesday at four o'clock. And you open every morning at ten o'clock. So you're keen. You want to see no, people. Actually, last night we had people coming in, so we were here till six o'clock in the end. So Excellent. you know, it's definitely ten till four. But if I'm here earlier and I'm working later, then. I shall be here. To be honest, I've got this lovely big blank canvas which has just been put up on the wall. This Indeed. <laughs> and the gesso is drawing on it. This is going to be the new wall art. Right. So everybody will be able to see it. And you can see here, I do have a colour sketch of what it's going to look like. Oh, wow. So you can see you start with yeah. sort of your basic tone kind of sketch. The of it. Yeah. I grid it up. Then I do a colour version, and then all I've got to do, no pressure, convert <laughs> this this small colour sketch to a very large piece of wall art. Yeah, so that's going to be a challenge, and that's going to be quite interesting. It'll keep you busy, won't it? And the message is cherish this earth, and I think that working with the willow and working with all these natural, sustainable materials, we definitely have to think about that. Okay. Well, that's lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Tracy. That's fantastic. No let me just say, yeah, thank you, it's all right. From my point of view, come and see Tracy, come and have a chat with us. She's an interesting person who does work that I think is really fascinating. Come in and see her. She's here until Wednesday at four o'clock and she's good for a gossip about art and artwork. <laughs>